in swimming, it's a very crazy sport because everybody is, you know, half naked all the time, little swimsuits. Um, and it is a huge thing, like as a girl, as a woman, um, starting your periods, going through puberty, swimming, very difficult with periods when you're first learning, right? Um, half naked, uh, always worried about when period's going to come and how to deal with it. Um, so hard. Never mind just being in school and dealing with it in school um, as a student, but then <laughs> being in the pool, girls, it's very tricky to learn. Um, and it's not something that I myself you feel com- comfortable about talking about with your coach. Um, and then obviously like body changes. Um, I think... I was quite, I would say I was quite mentally strong with my like body weight and being able to manage what I was eating. I think I was quite lucky with that, but um, it got to a point in my career where we started having our skin folds done. Um, I think I was 15 when I first had my skin fold. At the time, I was just like, whatever, it is what it is. This is what we're doing. Um, and I thought I was quite, you know, quite slim um you know a fit young girl um but with my first skin fold that I had done um I was actually told that uh, my skin fold was really high compared to the elite athletes which was the aim um so for me I was like oh quite a big shock um so I had to change but I got advised to change my diet which um made me more lean which is what they were aiming for in the elite sport um and, you know, I managed with that okay. Not everybody does because um, it can be very difficult. Um, I managed with it fine and my skin folds did come down. I was more lean um, and I improved my swimming over those years. But um, it did get to a point where um, I actually stopped having my periods for quite a few years. And I was totally healthy. I was totally fine. I always had energy. I always ate plenty, um, but very, you know, low fat foods, um, non and high sugars. Um, but it got to a point where I thought to myself, I'd made this up in my head, that I thought if I got my period, I was too fat. Mm-hmm. Which when I think back to that, that is that is a bit nuts. Um, but I was always healthy, um, there was never any worries about anything like that. But I don't know whether not having any periods is normal in elite sport, but I think mentally that's not right to think that if I have a period, I'm too fat. Um, and obviously girls go through different body changes. So, you know, Andrea, it's, it can be very difficult, um, the changes the girls go through. Um, and some girls can handle it better than others. Um, but yeah, it's so difficult and I'd like to think the support is there for girls that really do struggle um but then obviously the boys go through their body changes as well um so there's a lot going on but that's just from my experience but I was always healthy so yeah I I think it's it's very very tough you know very very tough um from obviously a, a male point of view I think um when I went to race uh when I went to race the broad for the first time and I was standing there and I was looking at the guys I had to race and they were double the size of me and I was like oh my gosh like I'm not going to be able to beat these guys they're they're massive they're they're taller than me they've got longer levers and I had a massive knock in confidence um and I just really, really struggled with that. And I, I dived into the race and I actually did quite well. And I, I sort of asked myself, why am I able to, to you know, do this? And, and my coach said, look, because you've got good technique, you've got good pacing. And then I started to look at, you know, all those other processes. It's not just about what you look like. It's not just about being conscious and looking at other people. And that was my... Um, sort of experiences as as a swimmer I think when you're going through it uh, you know when you're coaching swimmers that are going through it is a tough period but the com- the earlier conversations are much much better you know you will you know when you get a really fast swimmer from a young age it's, it's better to have that conversation earlier and say look you know 
you're swimming super fast. You've made some really, really big jumps in the time. There is going to be a point where you, you know, you're going to, you might get a little PB and the, and the margins get a little bit smaller and it's sort of education really. And, and helping the swimmers with that is super, super important. So any, any advice um, would be helpful and it's, it's going to come, obviously puberty comes when you're growing um, always going to be hormone change going on, um, body shape changing, um, metabolism changing, um, and it comes at different ages as well, obviously, which can be a difficult thing. Um, but obviously, if you get young athletes performing well at a very young age, um, is there something that they should be preparing for before BBE comes um, mentally and just sort of in the nutrition side of things? Um, but I think it should all be positive, you know, it should all be exciting, you know, growing up, learning new things. Um, it should never be a negative thing. It should always be positive. Um, yeah. And I don't think we should shy away from it. Um, as long as it's always done in a positive way of advising to help um, to get the best out of each individual.